Warning, the player selections you're about to see may flop miserably. FPL TV cannot be held responsible for any of your own transfer shockers. Please, FPL responsibly. Hey guys, and welcome back to The Point Predictor. Before starting today's video, a big congratulations goes to Russell Roberts from Jamaica for winning the coveted FPL TV Cup for the month of October. Russell climbed over 700,000 places in the rankings over the last three game weeks, racking up an impressive 168 points. Great stuff, my friend. You've won yourself the personally engraved FPL TV trophy, along with a range of other FPL-related prizes. The league code for the November Cup has now been posted over on the FPL TV Patreon page, so if you fancy your chances this month and simultaneously want to help support the FPL TV channel, then click the link in the description box below and get your team signed up before Game Week 11's deadline on Saturday. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters, and let's now move on to the point predictor. With a Friday deadline last week, unfortunately there was no point predictor for Game Week 10. However, that was probably for the best, with my choices from Game Week 9 all flopping once again. Ironically, four of my choices from Game Week 9 all went on to return points in the following Game Week, so they were decent picks, just not at the right time. It's been a very poor few Game Weeks for the point predictor recently, but let's see if I can do a bit better for Game Week 11. Also, if you do enjoy the Point Predictor series, be sure to drop a like on the video and most importantly, get subscribed to FPL TV. For my defensive choice this game week, initially my pick was the man, the myth, the legend John Lundstrom at home to Burnley. A very good option this week, I think. However, with me desperately needing to get some predictions right, I've chosen instead to fall back on the expensive but usually reliable Trent Alexander-Arnold, a player who always has a very good chance of getting attacking returns each week. Liverpool face a trip to Villa in game week 11, no easy fixture, but it's Alexander-Arnold's superb attacking statistics that still make him a great option on any given game week. Since the beginning of the season, no player has created more chances than Alexander-Arnold in the entire league. He's currently created 37, which is one more than the second-placed Kevin De Bruyne. Looking more recently, over the last four game weeks, he still tops the charts with 14 chances created. And if you watched the game against Spurs last time out, it's incredible how he came away from that game with just one single point. The fullback played a whopping 32 passes into Tottenham's penalty area in that game, far more than any other player. So, despite not getting attacking returns in the last four game weeks, if he continues to be this creative, then surely it's only a matter of time. For the midfielder below the price of 8 million this game week, I've chosen Anthony Martial. This was a very close call for game week 11, with both him and West Ham's Yarmolenko looking very promising options. So inevitably, Yarmolenko now will end up being the correct choice. It's been another injury hit season for Martial so far, however, when he has played, he's shown excellent consistency, because although he's only started four games this season, he's actually returned FPL points in all four of those games. What makes Martial such an appealing option this season is that despite being classed as a midfielder in FPL, when fit, he spearheads the United attack, therefore giving him an edge over other midfielders, as he'll likely be in better positions to score. This can be seen in his underlying stats for Game Week 10, because in just a 75-minute appearance against Norwich, the Frenchman racked up four big chances to score, more than any other player in the league last week. The small negative with Martial is that his opponents Bournemouth have done very well defensively in the last few weeks, which is one reason why Yarmolenko was also a very good shout for Game Week 11, with his opponents Newcastle giving away far more chances recently. My midfielder of any price this game week goes to Raheem Sterling. Following Southampton's 9-0 drubbing at the hands of Leicester last time out, it was difficult not to select a Man City player this week, and although Sterling has every chance of blanking and destroying our weekends, he does feel a bit of a no-brainer. A key reason to selecting Sterling this week is the return of Benjamin Mendy to the side, who, unlike Zinchenko, provides a lot more width for City down the left, allowing Sterling to drift more central. In the last two game weeks, which are the two games since Mendy returned to the team, notably Raheem Sterling has racked up 31 penalty area touches. This is by far the most of any player in the league, and 12 more than the second place David Silva and Jesus. So this backs up the point that with Mendy bombing forward, Sterling is given license to get into the kind of positions we want from him as a 12 million plus asset. 
Also during the last two weeks, Sterling has created the most big chances with four and had the second most shots inside the box with eight. So great stats all around here, offering both good creativity and good goal threat. My budget forward this game week, below the price of 8 million, goes to Brighton's Neil Mopé, which was a 50-50 between himself and his teammate Aaron Connolly. It's been a common trend to select an attacker in the point predictor facing Norwich this season, and that still hasn't changed, with the Canaries conceding two or more goals in seven of the last eight game weeks. This includes conceding five goals at the hands of Villa in game week eight, and also three goals to United last time out, which could have been a lot more considering they missed two penalties. The one small caveat is that Norwich did keep their first clean sheet of the season in game week nine, and that was away to Bournemouth. However, I think that says more about Bournemouth's struggling attack lately, with them having now failed to score in each of their last three games. Brighton, on the other hand, have been far more impressive going forward, especially at home, putting three goals past Tottenham and also three goals past Everton in their last two games at the Amex, notably with Neil Mopé scoring in both. Amongst forwards below the price of 8 million this season, Neil Mopé currently sits second for most shots inside the box on 25, just one less than the leading forward, Tammy Abraham. What I would say in regards to Mopé though, is that although he looks a good option this week, Brighton's fixtures do look tricky following this game against Norwich, so perhaps he's not the best option for the longer term. My any priced forward this game week, perhaps surprisingly, goes to Harry Kane. Now, many of us have been burned by Harry Kane this season, and there's no doubt that for 11 million he has massively underwhelmed. Would I bring him back into my team for the long term? Probably not, there's plenty of cheaper options matching and outperforming him this season. However, for this game week in particular away to Everton, I do fancy Kane to return some points, which is based more on a gut feeling. Everton just failed to inspire at the moment, losing five of their last six Premier League games, and Harry Kane in particular has a very impressive record against the Toffees. Kane has nine goals in nine Premier League appearances against Everton, not forgetting the 15-point haul he picked up at Goodison Park last season, when him and Son Heung-min ran rampant in a convincing 6-2 victory. And that's my five point predictor picks for game week 11. Four selections backed up with very sound logic, with only Harry Kane the real punt of the game week. So hopefully this lot don't flop like a lot of my choices have recently. If you enjoyed the episode, please support the channel by getting subscribed to FPL TV. Good luck to all of you for Game Week 11, FPL responsibly and I'll catch you all very soon.